hello friends so today we are going to learn about the urea cycle well uh, the urea cycle is also known as the krebs henslet cycle or the ornithine cycle well it's called the ornithine cycle because ornithine is regenerated in it so just remember these two names krebs henslet cycle and ornithine cycle and well the function of a uh, urea cycle is that uh, we all know that ammonia is toxic for our cells so it's a way to you know detoxify the ammonia and uh, so that it can be transferred okay uh, and then it can be eliminated so let's come to the steps of uh, the urea cycle the first step is uh before we come to the steps i just want you to know that the urea cycle takes place in the liver okay the whole of it takes place in the liver now can you guess whether in the uh, cells of the liver whether it takes place in the mitochondria or the cytoplasm well it takes place in uh, the first two reactions takes place in the mitochondria and the rest take place in the cytoplasm let's come to the first uh, first uh, uh, reaction so in this you can see a car okay so this car is um, uh, being transported like it's a kind of transporter and the first transporter that you have is carbamoyl phosphate synthetase okay carbamoyl phosphate synthesis and as the name suggests what is synthesized is your carbamoyl phosphate carbamoyl phosphate is synthesized okay now next um uh, so in this what happens uh, this is your first reaction that's why i have uh, numbered it as one so carbon monoxide uh, carbon dioxide plus ammonia Uh, and two ATPs, they when uh, when the enzyme carbamoyl phosphate synthetase acts on it, it um, it forms the uh, carbamoyl phosphate. Now, um, I want you to know that carbamoyl phosphate one acts on it. The carbamoyl phosphate two is busy making the pyrimidine cycle. It's 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 busy in the pyrimidine. Uh, synthesis um, okay so and also i want you to know that i have drawn a snake over here and that's that's a short for nag n a g that's in hindi and um that's actually n acetyl glutamate and that's like an allosteric activator for cps1 so cps1 is only active in the presence of this snake Okay, so that's why this reaction takes place, and I've drawn the car because to remind you of carbamoyl phosphate synthesis. So that's your first reaction. Now let's come to the second reaction. In your first, the transporter was a car. Now the next reaction, your transporter is now an auto. Okay, and what happens is there is transfer of the carbamoyl group of the carbamoyl phosphate. okay from of the carbamoyl phosphate you have the carbamoyl group um which uh, uh which takes play, uh, which is helping and it helps to transfer the carbamoyl uh, group of uh, carbamoyl phosphate uh, to ornithine you can see an orange over here to ornithine and that forms citrulline so you can see a citrus fruit over here so ornithine which is your orange is sitting in this photo and this carbamoyl uh, group of um, carbamoyl phosphate is transferred to ornithine to form the citrus fruit and i've named this two because you know this is your second reaction and both of these one and two are the ones that take place in your mitochondria okay the rest of the reactions take place in your cytosol Okay now let's move on to the next one in your next reaction you can see that um, uh 
now your transporter is no longer an auto uh, which is i named this auto because it is an ornithine transport carbomyl uh, carbomyl okay now the next transport you uh, it's no longer a vehicle but an ass okay that's the um, that's your uh, transporter as stands for arginino uh, succinate synthetase arginino succinate cell uh, synthesis oh um, i can even color the the as silver color so that you remember that it's uh, it's um, it's arginine okay so this is a silver colored i i hope you can appreciate it yeah it's a silver colored uh, ash okay and uh, uh, in this what happens is aspartate uh, which is this a uh, green one over here this uh, aspartate i have tried to draw it as an asparagine this aspartate uh, the amino group of the nit uh, it links the amino nitrogen of the aspartate so this has an amino nitrogen in it okay so the amino group of the aspartate amino nitrogen group of the aspartate uh, uh, is transferred to citrulline okay okay it's transferred to the citrus uh, so, uh, thing that we have on this fruit that we have and this enzyme this type of enzyme is a ligase so i've just drawn a kind of ribbon you know you ligate things so it's like his uh, tail has been ligated so uh, to rem remind you that this aspartate sorry arginino succinate uh, succinate synthetase arginino succinate synthetase that's your Mm, uh, like is yes. so what happens uh, that was your so what happens is finally when you uh, when it's transferred to the uh, this uh, citrulline um, uh, ATP and uh, two uh, inorganic phosphates are utilized and then what is formed is arginino succinate so arginino succinate synthetase why is it named so because ultimately you are forming arginino succinate which is like a silver coated candy which you suck on so it's like a and that's why i have named name, this that's why this is called as arginino succinate now you again you see uh, in the next reaction that was your third reaction and now I'm going to go to your fourth reaction in which uh, you know you have your silver coated candy which you suck on so that's arginosuccinate and it is getting lysed by some kind of lawn mower kind of machine okay which has a knife like blade okay and uh, when it's lysed it is cleaved into arginine which is completely a silver thing and fumarate which are like fumes okay so that's what it's converted to and this type of enzyme arginine um, it's like this machine's name is asl so it's like arginine succinate lyase and that's a form of lyase remember this one was a ligase but this one is a lyase okay now we come to our last reaction which you can see over here that our arginine from our previous story this one which was formed is um, hydrolytically cleaves so I have drawn water to show a uh, water type t-shirt that this man is wearing now our transporter is no longer the car or the auto or the ass or the lawn mower but it is a man the man is transporting it so this man is wearing some kind of jeans and it has a t-shirt which has water in it so it's like a hydrolytic cleavage of arginine by arginase so uh, this man is wearing jeans so that's kind of related to genase and arginase so he's silver so arginase he's wearing the jeans so i took the um, gin from there so yeah so this uh, uh, this man is our transporter his name is arginase 
and he cleaves the arginine and he, uh, what he does is releases the urea he has a yellow colored balloon which he then releases so here your urea is released and he regenerates or reforms the ornithine which was sitting in the otter which we had used he didn't throw this passenger away he he kept it so it's like ornithine is reformed and he is going to kick this back into the mitochondria the mitochondria is this pink colored wall and he is going to throw this ornithine back into the uh, mitochondria and what is this man a type of he's neither a ligase he's not neither a lies but he is a hydrolase okay now that was your whole urea cycle done okay uh, now what I want you to uh, not now what we'll be discussing is the disorders in urea cycle now the first disorder is the carbamoyl uh, phosphate synthetase one this one when this is not there then this is not going to be there okay I'll just hide it up okay when this is not going to be there you'll have ammonia increase okay your ammonia will increase and that is hyperammonemia type 1 okay so you have hyperammonemia type 1 if your cps1 is not there okay now let's move on if your otc if this this full thing the otc is not there then what will happen it won't convert to the citrulline but ornithine will remain there but again your ammonia will also be there so it's like hyper ammonemia type 2 so i've colored this yellowish to show that ammonia is still there and it's a type 2 so hyper ammonemia type 2 may occur also i would like you to know that this is the most common type of um, urea cycle disorder that uh, we come to know of uh, and also that it's x-linked okay so it's most common and it's x-linked and you, you know that most people over here in mitochondria or you could just say in mumbai travel by autos rather than the car so that's why you can remember that the two is more common than one which is the otc transporter now let's come to the next one if your arginine succinate synthetase this as if this is not there then what will happen is you'll have more of this cit uh, citrulline okay because when the ash was there it was eating upon the citrulline and forming this um, uh, this uh, silver coated candy but if he is not there then you are going to get more of citrulline so it will be a citrullinemia and this will be type 1 citrullinemia type 1 citrullinemia next is if your lyase enzyme is not there if your lawnmower type of lyase is not there then you are going to have more of these candies left these candies won't even cleave so it's like you'll have more of arginino succinate and what will happen is you'll have ar arginino succinate urea now if your arginase which was your man wearing the jeans the silver uh, silver man wearing jeans if he is not there then you are going to have more of arginine and then you are going to have arginemia okay also i want you to know that this is the place where there is least amount of hyperammonemia hyperammonemia was most in 1 2 but it's least in this uh, this reaction uh, in which um, arginine arginine is, is deficient okay now uh, the transporter defects let's come to that so when your ornithine transporter also known as ornithine permease when this is not there like the transporter is not there like this transport thing is not there then you have a syndrome called triple h syndrome in which you have hyperammonemia hyper uh, ornithemia and hyper citrullinemia okay all these three will increase all these three uh, type type of citrus things that you see will increase if you do not have your ornithine transporter okay and if you do not have your citrine transporter then you have citrullinemia 
type 2 if you do not have your citrine transporter then you have a citrullinemia type 2 so i'll just write that as 2 over here just to make you remember that's that's when you have when you don't have the aspartate uh, glutamate transporter so i'll just name this 2 okay if you don't have this this uh, as over here you have citrullinemia 1 but when you don't have aspartate uh, glutamate transporter um, that is a g t okay not as but a g t when a g t is not there then you have something called as uh, citrullinemia type 2 now uh, something else the excretion of pyrimidine in urine is hyperammonemia type 2 again so uh, there are two uh, like i told you that cps2 is busy making the pyrimidine pyrimidine synthesis but when the pyrimidine uh, is there in urine that's also hyperammonemia type 2 so this two helps you to remember both of them okay and uh, you uh, when there is arginemia okay when there's more of arginine over here or more of arginine over here you have scissor uh, like scissoring you have progressive spastic uh, um, dysplagia uh, sorry hemiplegia or something diplegia that's scissoring okay and uh, uh, if you do not have this arginine succinate um, succinate in the succ arginine succinate aciduria what you have is tufted hair okay your hairs would be Trusted. okay that's it that's it for your uh, urea cycle now treatment in any case your first line uh, treatment of uh, uh, your uh, urea cycle the first line is always arginine arginine is an essential amino acid arginine is an allosteric activator of NAG synthetase and arginine forms ornithine you remember because finally you are you are forming ornithine by arginine okay so uh, that's your art and uh, it's contraindicated in arginase defect so first line treatment of any urea cycle is arginine okay now the next is uh, you could give acetylation therapy that salt of uh, organic acid that is uh, sodium benzoate and um, or uh, sodium phenyl butyrate and mechanism of action is that it scavenges nitrogen by condensing with non-essential amino acids like glycine and glutamine and uh, next you have your cps1 defect versus your NAG synthetase defect arginine therapy it is responded by the cps1 defect but not by the NAG synthetase defect so that's one thing you can remember that CPS1 defect uh, when you give uh, arginine CPS1 defect will uh, will uh, be responded but not the NAG synthetase defect. Now hyperammonemia type 1 versus 2 in 1 you have acidosis, coma, convulsions okay in your car which is your, which is a packed thing you might have acidosis, coma and convulsions and check orotic acid level okay so you when you have uh, this one uh, you have excess of ornithine so you have or orotic acid urea so in this you have to check your ornithine level and if it is increased it's type 2 and if it's not then it's type 1 that's it folks for your uh, urea cycle i hope that you found it interesting